So now I'm going to hand it over to Krishna, and uh, he's going to take over and discuss about his work. So Krishna, I think you can share your screen now. Yes, sir. Hello all. Good evening. I am Krishna Chandran, master student working in IIT Madras in structural engineering and this is my topic for today's seminar that is structural assessment of an existing heritage structure. So basically my webinar consists of four sections. The section one which describes about the structure under investigation the section two which focuses on possibilities of modeling masonry buildings in Diana. Consider the, the example of a three-walled open structure. Section three focuses on modeling and analysis of existing masonry structure in Diana using smeared macro modeling approach. And in section four, I'll be focusing on the component level analysis using discrete interface model in Diana. So without further delay, I'll get into the section one, that is description on the structure under investigation. So the failure mechanisms in masonry can be basically classified into two, that is in-plane mechanisms as well as out-of-plane mechanisms. In in-plane mechanisms, the structure will be deforming in its own plane, and out-of-plane mechanisms, the structure will be deforming in out-of-the-plane direction of the structure. So out-of-plane mechanisms are basically local mechanisms which are associated with the local response of structural elements or macro elements, but they can always cause a drop in global load carrying capacity of the structure. So here I'll go through a brief description on the structure chosen. The heritage structure chosen for studies was the town hall or Mary building in Pondicherry. The structure is 143 years old and was built in the 19th century with clay bricks as well as layers of mud and lime mortar. The structure has a total height of 12.3 meters with 6.6 meters for the ground story and 5.7 meters for the top story. The wall that is shown here, that is this wall, is having an aspect ratio of 1.4. And this can make it extremely slender and susceptible to mechanism formation in the outer plane direction. The roof slab is made of Madras tiles and steel tie beams are provided at the upper story level to prevent large deformation along the weaker direction. So these are the plan as well as section and elevation details of the structure. Basically tie beams are provided in this direction to prevent the outer plane deformation of the structure. So here let me go into the section two, that is possibilities of modeling masonry buildings in Diana, considering the example of a three-walled open structure. So here I'll be addressing basically three questions, that is first question, which is what are the possibilities for modeling seismic behavior of masonry effectively? The second question is how does these modeling strategies take out of plane mechanisms into consideration? And the third one is how do different analysis procedures compare the mechanisms generated, that is nonlinear static as well as nonlinear dynamic analysis procedures. So addressing question one can be considered as the first stage of this presentation. That is once we find the modeling procedures or the strategies adopted in Dyna, then that's it. So here I'll be explaining the different set of modeling approaches used conventionally for modeling masonry. The first one is the detailed micromodeling approach. We know that masonry is an anisotropic material made of units as well as mortar. So it's always ideal to model masonry as units and mortar separately, that is units as well as joints separately. But the thing is that it will cause a huge amount of computational effort as well as time. So that's why this is termed as detailed micromodeling. Instead of that, we can go for another approach that is simplified micromodeling where the units will be expanded to the center line of the joint that is center line of the mortar and we will be assigning the joint as an interface 
and after that we will be assigning properties, nonlinear properties for the interface and units and this is termed as simplified micro modeling. There is one more approach that is macro modeling or smeared macro modeling approach where units as well as mortar are smeared out in the continuum. As already stated, masonry is an anisotropic material and the term masonry is very generalized. That is, it can include units which range from irregular stones to well-burned clay brick. And different types of mortar also is possible that can be made of cement, lime, etc. Within these combinations also, there can be numerous subdivisions due to the pattern of arrangement of units. So for continuum modeling or smeared macro modeling approach, like we cluster different units and mortar under an equivalent term masonry, it is also necessary to combine their respective individual properties into an equivalent property. This is achieved through the principle of homogenization. So whatever I have explained till now can be presented in the form of a flowchart that is numerical modeling strategies of masonry can be classified into three macro modeling, micro modeling and meso modeling. Micro modeling is the detailed micro modeling approach and meso modeling is simplified micro modeling approach. Macro modeling, as already stated, units and motor are smeared out and equivalent properties are given with principle of homogenization. In micro modeling, properties of both unit and motor are used and meso modeling approach will model the units as expanded and each joint plumbed into an equivalent interface. So now I'll be focusing on the nonlinear finite element modeling capabilities of Diana, the different kinds of elements that are used. The first one is the plane strix elements for which the coordinates of the element should be in one plane. Also one more necessary, cons uh, necessary requirement is that the forces must be acting in the plane of the element and stress components perpendicular to the phase should be zero. So for the capturing the out of plane behavior of masonry perfectly, this is not going to be an ideal element. So we'll be going for more exact elements like solid elements, which are general purpose elements. But they can always cause large system of equations. And they are used only when other elements are ineffective. So the best possible way is to use the shell elements, that is 2D shell elements, which is a combination of plane stress element and has an out of plane bending, that is the combination of plane stress element as well as plate bending element. So till now, the, for capturing the in-plane response of a masonry wall, it was adequately captured using a plane stress element. But using 2D shell elements, both flat shell elements as well as curved shell elements, there are two classes of elements in Diana. They are flat shell elements as well as curved shell elements. Both these can be used for a 3D model, but we'll be explaining why they were used and what are their relative advantages as well as disadvantages. So this is the slide which explains the merits and demerits of using flat shell elements as well as curved shell elements. And this is the point at which the usage of flat shell elements and curved shell elements make a difference. Both these can have three translations and two rotations with one extra rotation that is the trilling rotation which is in the Z direction, out of plane direction. And for flat shell element, all coordinates of the member will be lying in the same plane. For curved shell elements, all coordinates of the member need not lie in the same plane. And forces will be there in all directions for, can be applied in all directions for flat shell element as well as curved shell elements. But the interesting fact is that for flat shell element, moment must act in the plane of the element. And for curved shell element, moment must, moment must act about an axis which is in the element phase. So this was the model which was considered for study, which is a experimental model from the pre-conference workshop in the International Masonry Conference, which was there in Portugal in 2013. So for modeling in Diana, first of all, we should be familiar with the geometry of the model. We should be importing the geometry of the model to Diana interface. So as already special elements or virtual elements can be used for modeling. These are the diagrams of flat shell elements as well as curved shell elements. Then the suitable material model should be applied. For discrete interface approach, we 
generally use combined cracking, shearing, fishing model and for smeared macro modeling approach what I have used is Rankine Hill anisotropic model. And then it will be the analysis part. We can carry out nonlinear static as well as nonlinear dynamic analysis. So what happens in 3D modeling? So we'll be interested in the formation of collapse mechanism, finding the which are the collapse mechanisms, which all mechanisms are formed, and at what time or when, at what stage, and how does this structure perform globally. So there can be two possible approaches as the in-plane walls can be modeled using fractal element and the plane facade wall can be used model using curved shell element. And also another approach is that we can model the whole structure using curved shell element alone. So in my work, these two modeling strategies were adopted. That is, this is a model of the structure. So these in-plane walls, that is this one and this one were modeled using flat shell elements initially and the outer plane, this facade wall was modeled using curved shell element. So this is how the geometry looks like. Initially, I imported all the geometry from AutoCAD into Diana and if we select the option geometry curve intersect, we can separate these lines out, that is, we can separately clip these lines, so this will be useful for meshing the whole element. After that, we will be selecting auto mesh planar area from the option mesh in the toolbar. So once that is done, here we have to select the material properties as well as the properties of the element. So initially for the curved shell element that is for the masonry, the material thickness was chosen as 230 mm and it was modeled as isotropic element with an elastic modulus of 5170 megapascal and a mass density of 1890 kilogram per meter cube. Then the Poisson's ratio was assumed to be 0.15. In this window we will be assigning all properties for the masonry that is the shell element, curved shell element. After that we will be assigning the properties for the interface element that is mortar the interface nonlinearities were modeled using the combined cracking, shearing, crushing model. It has a normal stiffness modulus as well as a shear stiffness modulus, that is a tangential stiffness modulus, which were obtained from some equations that will be explained later. So all other details like cohesion was assumed as 0.2, internal friction angle was given, then confining normal stress and softening parameter etc etc were given. The compressive strength of masonry was assumed to be 5 megapascal and the fraction energy was given as 60 Newton per mm. So these are the governing equations that for, uh, that were referred for finding these values. For modulus of velocity it was assumed as 5170 MPa. For the interface nonlinearities the cohesion friction angle etc and this fraction energy and fraction energy mode 1 was assumed as 0 0.012 that is tensile fraction energy and fraction energy mode 2 was but according to this equation that is 1 by 10 of the cohesion value. Then normal stiffness as well as shear stiffness moduli were calculated using these two, okay, these two equations and found as 83.5 Newton per mm cube as well as 39.5 Newton per mm cube. Then the equivalent plastic displacement was found as 0.03 mm. So once interface nonlinearities properties are found, then we will be assigning properties for crack, which is also an interface that is at the center of each brick I have assigned a crack for modeling the vertical splitting of units. So basically it is like this whole section will be unit, here it will be joint 
and at this point it will be a crack. So crack was assumed to be linear elastic and it's an interface element with a normal stiffness modulus of 890 Newton per mm cube and shear stiffness modulus of 357 Newton per mm cube. So this is how the model looks like when all the properties are assigned and when the meshing is carried out. After the planar area will is auto mesh, the model will be generated as shown and then we'll be assigning interface elements for the in-between lines that is from mesh we will select element and create interface element and if we select the meshes it will be automatically assigning these interface elements. So this is a diagram of interface element including joint as well as cracks. But the joint is assigned non-linearities but crack is assigned in elastic properties. So this is how the joint looks like in English bond once the cracks are hidden. So it is like this is a joint, this is a joint. At this part I have hidden a crack which is already existing. So to simulate the action of a rigid diaphragm I have incorporated a master slave node connection that is once the geometry and meshing is over this rigid diaphragm action can be assigned for the model by selecting this option mesh element and create link. So I selected this one as master node and all the nodes at the top of the structure were connected to this top node using a master slave node connection and the master node slave node connection was assigned property of a rigid link element. So this is how it looks, looks like after assigning the rigid diaphragm like all these nodes are connected to this top of the gable by using rigid link elements. What it is doing is that when if you are applying a displacement at the top of this gable all these nodes will be assigned the same displacement so it is moving together. So this is an ideal way of simulating the rigid diaphragm action. So once diaphragm constraints are given and the meshing and other modeling things are over we will be assigning the boundary conditions for the structure from this option that is analysis, boundary condition, constraint. Then here I have applied a fixed boundary condition at the base of the structure. All degrees of freedom are fixed at the base of the structure. Then for the application of load we will be selecting this option that is analysis, load, body force. Initially we have to apply the self weight. So by this option analysis, load, body force we will be applying the self weight of the structure. We have to specify the direction in which self weight is applied along with the acceleration of gravity, acceleration due to gravity in that direction. So here I will be specifying acceleration due to gravity in this direction that is y direction, negative y direction and my units are Newton as well as millimeter so it will be minus 9810. So for push over analysis what I have chosen is analysis load displacement I have given a displacement based loading and I have given that displacement at the top of this gable basically for applying any sort of loads we can select this option that is analysis load force or displacement here I have chosen displacement based loading so I have applied a displacement load of 40 mm so once all these steps are over our final model is ready for analysis this arrow mark indicates the direction of application of displacement load and it is at the top of this gable. All these are indicates the boundary condition that is fixed fixed boundary condition at the base of the structure. So once this part is over we can analyze the structure using analysis edit model with dynamic editor. Basically in Dyna analysis is carried out in separate toolbox called mesh editor. So this is the window for mesh edit. So once we have imported the model into this window it looks like this. 
so here we will be assigning the different analysis procedures so I have assigned structural nonlinear analysis the nonlinear effects can be specified here we can assign physical nonlinearity as well as geometrical nonlinearity in this new execute block we will be in load steps we will be assigning the load steps in increments that is in increments of 0.1 or 0 0.01 depending upon the performance so after that we will be selecting the equilibrium iteration we can choose either newton raphson equilibrium iteration method or seeking quasi method etc etc then once that is over we will run the analysis and first of all I carried out the eigenvalue analysis and this is what I got the results for eigenvalue analysis in both these models that is this is smeared macro modeling example of the same in both these models the fundamental time period was got as 0.1 seconds and both these are showing the out of plane movement of these in plane walls in the fundamental model itself so it is necessary for us to capture that effect so this is the result of the model which was done using flat shell plus curved shell element that is flat shell elements for modeling this in plane return walls as and curved shell elements for modeling the out of plane facade wall you can see an animation of the same so it's maximum going to displacement of 3.15 mm So this slide explains the load displacement curve for that analysis that is using flat shell element as well as curved shell element. The total load carrying capacity of the structure was obtained as 124 kilonewton. And the peak displacement of the structure as shown by the figure is 3.5 mm. And the failure pattern that was obtained was already identified. So in the next model basically that is the model using curved shell elements only that is for the in-plane return walls curved shell elements were used and out of plane facade wall also curved shell elements were used so the animation is shown in this figure we can see that we are getting a more nice failure propagation or crack propagation in this model we can see the out of plane movement of this in-plane return walls as shown by the first mode and we can see the shear sliding in this wall and diagonal cracking in this wall with openings also so once that behavior is captured I'll show the animation once more so the next slide explains about the force displacement curve for the model using curved shell elements only so the ultimate load was obtained as 110 kilonewton the even though the modeling was carried out using only curved shell elements the material models material properties that were assigned were the same and the only change was brought in was the use of these elements so and the ultimate displacement of the structure was shown as 2.5 mm close to 2.5 mm and it is clear from the displacement profiles of both animations that in the first one the displacements were reaching more than 3 mm or 4 mm uh, that is in between in the range of 3 mm to 4 mm and no signs of out of plane movement of return walls were seen but for the other one that is the model using curved shell elements only it is evident that there is a significant movement of the in plane return walls and the cracks were captured properly so this is an, another animation showing the importance of out of plane walls in the total load carrying capacity of the structure that is this animation corresponds to the post displacement curve of the curved shell element only so this is the push over curve for the total structure these are for in plane return walls and this is the curve for the out of plane walls so once the in plane walls are have a drop in load carrying capacity the out of plane walls have a redistribution of forces and in, it is taking the load 
So by the contribution from this out of plane world, the structure is not failing and structure is having a some amount of load carrying capacity and after this out of plane walls, out of plane wall fails only, we can completely say that the structure is completely failing. So the mechanisms that were obtained after this model are the out of plane moment of the moment of the facade wall and shear sliding followed by the out of plane moment for this in plane return wall and diagonal cracking followed by the out of plane moment for this macro block that is the in plane return wall with opening. So this is a table which shows the expected mechanisms at different PGS from the previous slide. The diagonal shear was initiated at about 0.38 G. Shear sliding initiation in the other return wall was at about 0.58 G. And the failure of return walls due to sliding shear and diagonal cracking was happening at about 1.1 G from the force displacement curve. So after the analysis using fractional elements as cur and curvature elements with roof constraints that is master slave node connection of the top nodes. Another analysis was carried out that is without this master slave node connection it simulates the flexible diaphragm behavior. So for this kind of modeling the animation shows that there is a sudden failure in the model and this can be observed from the load displacement curve also. In the pushover curve, the effect is shown. That is, in the previous two models, we were able to see a total load carrying capacity of 120 kilonewton and 100 kilonewton. Compared to that, in a model without rigid diaphragm, that is, no master, master slave node connection or diaphragm constraints, we are able to get a maximum load of 40 kilonewton only, and we can see a sudden failure. That is, by reaching 0.6 mm, the one of the wall is going up to a low value of load carrying capacity and the structure itself is reducing its load carrying capacity as a whole. So this static analysis was carried out in these three models and after that it carried out an incremental dynamic analysis. So this was the input ground motion used. The input ground motions, input ground motions that were used corresponds to the Northridge earthquake. So the ground motions were scaled in factors of these that is 0 0.51, 1.52, 2.5, and 3. And the peak displacement of the top node or control node was monitored. And the corresponding acceleration value, spectral acceleration value was also recorded. And when the displacement is drastically increasing beyond the spectral acceleration value, we can see that the structure is going through the nonlinear phase. So this is the curve which compares static pushover analysis as well as the results from incremental dynamic analysis. From this we can see that three ground motions, input ground motions were used and compared with the static pushover analysis. For this analysis we can see that the peak load was found to be matching but the post peak behavior for this structure was not found to be matching. So the initial part of the curve is magnified in the next leg that is here we can see that for a couple of ground motions the peak load is matching with the static pushover analysis that is 120 kilonewton but the post peak behavior is not there is no close agreement in the post peak behavior so this is the progressive behavior of the structure during incremental dynamic analysis in the first step that is scaling factor of 0.5 This one is shown and the in step two we can see an opening of cracks here and the out of plane facade wall also. In step three corresponding to a scaling factor of 1.5 we can see much more damage propagation in these two walls and in step four we can see a complete damage profile and we can see that say that the structure has 
undergone large deformation, which indicates its collapse. So, as already observed, these are the inferences from the analysis that have been carried out till now. The right choice of element for modeling has been obtained as curved shell element because we are able to capture the ideal behavior or the ideal crack propagation using curved shell elements only. The input parameters for modeling were sorted out and the effect of lack of diaphragm that is flexible diaphragm corresponds to a 63 percentage drop in load carrying capacity of the structure and we, are, we have also shown that in the elastic region static pushover analysis as well as incremental dynamic analysis matches whereas in the post peak region both of them disagree. So from all the analysis that were carried out till now we conclude that the contribution to load carrying capacity from the outer plane walls in a structure with less redundance that is in a three walled open structure where, where load carrying lateral load resistance is provided by these three set of walls only is very much significant we can't ignore that it is also shown from this diagram also that is after a failure in inclined return walls that is there is a significant amount of load taken by the outer plane walls so from the analysis that were carried out till now we have answered these two questions that is what are the possibilities for modeling seismic response of masonry effectively as well as how does the different analysis procedures compare in terms of mechanisms generated. Now it is important for us to check whether the generated mechanisms agree with the ones from equivalent frame approach. So this is the focus of this section that is section 3 modeling and analysis of an existing heritage structure in Diana using smeared macro modeling. The details of the structure were already explained in section 1. So in nonlinear finite element in modeling in Diana it is possible to make an exhaustive study of the whole structure. Also more sophisticated material models are available that as we have already shown combined shear cracking, shearing cracking crushing model which was uh, through which we were able to simulate the propagation, crack propagation very effectively and we were uh, able to capture the actual response also more accurately. So the two questions that we are addressing in this section is, is it worthy of adopting a computationally expensive finite element approach and are we off target if equivalent frame approach is adopted? If so, by what margin? So this is why we chose an existing masonry structure because an existing masonry structure can always have variabilities in structural configurations within a building. Also, retrofit of existing constructions is a relevant topic in present scenario. Also, the importance of local mechanisms are not properly addressed in quotes in codes all over the world but it can well be the governing factor while we adopt the retrofitting strategies. So the global level analysis of the heritage structure was carried out using equivalent frame approach as well as nonlinear finite element modeling approach. The primary concerns were the global lateral load and deformation capacities of the structure with focus on indications of the possible mechanisms that can arise in the structure. So this is a brief description of equivalent frame approach where the software used was Trimuri and in Trimuri walls are subdivided into PLs as well as panels that is micro macro elements. So this wall is idealized as PLs like this and spandrels with rigid nodes in between and analysis is carried out with respect to these macro elements. So in this part let me briefly go through the modeling aspects of the heritage structure. The first step was creating geometry as already stated. So I imported the geometry from AutoCAD in the form of DXF 3D or you can also create the geometry in Diana itself. Here in this case the ge geometry was imported and this is the geometry. After that meshing was carried out as explained earlier. The approach use, 
used here is smeared macro modeling that is bricks and mortar are not divided into units and discrete interface instead of that planar walls, walls were meshed as a whole like this so each walls were modeled individually separately so the first this wall was meshed and then these walls were meshed like that the whole structure was meshed as a whole so the material model used for the sneered macro modeling approach was Rankine Hill anisotropic approach Rankine Hill anisotropic model the elastic model was elastic modulus was assumed as 2000 megapascal and the Rankine Hill anisotropic model has this ability of giving different strength as well as different properties in different directions for masonry as it is an anisotropic material so the compressive strength was given as 3 megapascal the tensile strength of the material was assigned, assumed to be 0.1 megapascal and initial shear strength also 0.1 megapascal fractional energy as 0.012 newton per mm compressive fractional energy as 16.25 and plastic strain as 0.003 now a brief description on how rigid diaphragm was incorporated in this model as seen in the earlier slides that is in the previous section here also I have connected all these nodes to the to one of these master's node using master slave node connection that is rigid link elements after that it will look like this that is all these nodes are connected through rigid links to this node at the top roof level and at this intermediate floor level and displacement can be applied at this node and I have applied an displacement of 100 mm so once meshing is carried out and boundary conditions as well as load application is over it is the phase 4 analysis the, anal the model was imported to mesh edit were initially this eigenvalue analysis was carried out the number of eigenpairs were selected as 10 and these steps were explained earlier that is in analysis we will be selecting the type of analysis to be carried out eigenvalue analysis, linear static analysis or nonlinear analysis we will be defining the eigenvalue type in this dialog box and here we can in execute steps we can select the number of Hagen pairs the maximum number of iterations etc and once Hagen value analysis is over we will be carrying out the nonlinear analysis which consists of two ex blocks execute blocks that is one is application of self weight and the other one is the application of push over load we will be applying load steps in increments and suitable iteration methods or iteration schemes can be selected and finally the output will be generated and we can export that to Midas FX Plus that is the interface for Dyna now I'll go through the results that were obtained after eigenvalue analysis of the structure as well as nonlinear non structural nonlinear analysis so this is the material model or the model that was created in Diana and this is the equivalent frame model that was created in Trimuri the dead load stresses maximum were obtained as 0.5 megapascal and after carrying out eigenvalue analysis the translation in this direction was obtained as the first mode with time period of 0.26 seconds in, and 77 percentage mass participation factor in nonlinear finite element modeling in Diana and a time period of 0.23 seconds and 77 percentage mass participation factor pretty much similar in equivalent frame modeling approach in Trimuri so this was the push -over, results of the pushover analysis obtained in Diana as well as the equivalent frame approach in Trimuri the peak load was obtained as 5800 kilonewton 
nonlinear finite element modeling approach in Diana, and the peak load was obtained as 7,500 kilonewton with an ultimate displacement of about close to 40 mm in equivalent frame approach and close to 28 mm in nonlinear finite element modeling approach. So this slide explains the effect of rigid diaphragm. I model the structure using master-slave node connection to incorporate the rigid diaphragm action. And also another model was creating with the, created without any connection at the top nodes. So that simulates the flexible diaphragm. That is, in the first case, that is rigid diaphragm case, as already explained, all nodes were connected to this node using master-slave node connection. For flexible diaphragm, nothing like that was incorporated. So withholding indicates the model without any roof constraints that is flexible diaphragm and with tying indicates the model with roof constraints that is rigid diaphragm approach. So the plot of base shear versus displacement is as shown in this figure. So for the model with times that is rigid diaphragm approach, we are getting a maximum load of 0.16 percentage of the total mass of the structure that is base shear as in percentage expressed as in percentage of the total mass of the structure. So it was around 0.16 percentage for the model with times and around 0.14 percentage for the model without tying. So the plastic strain pierced due to the out of plane displacements were captured like this. So you can see the failure propagation like this. So there is a clear cut out of plane movement of these walls and damage propagation can be shown in this figure. This is this pertains to the model with flexible but diaphragm that is without tying. In Tremore, there was also an analysis carried out with different percentage of diaphragm flexibilities, that is 1.8.6.4, etc. And this curve corresponds to the nonlinear finite element modeling curve in Diana. So, if we are using an using the model with rigid diaphragm, that is with tying at the top nodes, we can see this kind of crack propagation, that is an ideal crack propagation diagonal cracks extending and he is getting plastified at this level and we can't see any damage propagation due to the out of plane movement of this PS that is we can't see a damage propagation like this the central pier getting plastified so this can be shown in the form of an animation in this slide this is the damage propagation in for flexible diaphragm that is without any tines at the roof level. We can see a gradual damage propagation the out of plane movement of these walls and PS getting plastified. Whereas for the next one that is the one with rigid diaphragm, the failure propagation is interesting. We can see this kind of failure propagation. We can't see any cracks, or cracks means any damage propagation due to the out of plane movement of this PS. What we can see is this diagonal crack formation. Show once more. So these diagonal cracks can be observed. So this is a this is an image of the two possible approaches that is rigid diaphragm as well as flexible diaphragm. In flexible diaphragm, this type of damage propagation as already explained was shown. And for rigid diaphragm case, we could see this diagonal cracks and this kind of failure propagation. And analysis was carried out in the stronger direction of the structure as well as weaker direction that a stronger direction means the structure was pushed in this direction initially and the weaker direction means the structure was pushed in the in this direction that is y direction in the second analysis 
So a comparison of results is shown. In the stronger direction, Tremore was showing a maximum load of around 8000 kilonewton and it reaches up to a maximum of 38 to 40 mm. But Diana, that is nonlinear finite element modeling in Diana is showing a much more lower load that is close to 5800 kilonewton and a maximum ultimate displacement of 28 mm which shows that the structure may fail, the structure may have some premature collapse due to out of plane movements. This is not captured well in equivalent frame approach but which is shown accurately in the smeared macro, macro modeling approach used in Diana. For comparison of results in the weaker direction, uh, Tremuri shows an ultimate load of 6000 kilonewton whereas Diana shows a much lower load that is 4000 kilonewton with an ultimate displacement of 21 mm for Diana and 24 mm for Tremuri. So the, what this diagram explains is that as stated earlier, the structure can have out of plane mechanisms forming and equivalent frame approach of Tremuri is not capturing that well but Diana is pretty much giving all failure mechanisms and damage propagation properly. So after the third section is over, now I'll be dealing with the fourth section where is the component level analysis using discrete interface approach. There can also local mechanisms arise in a structure which should be analyzed using discrete interface model which was already explained in the combined sharing cracking crushing model. So the macro model which we feel that is acceptable to failure is modeled rigorously using units as well as joints and under the action of the same load it is checked for the occurrence of possible local mechanisms. So I have modeled this wall that is the wall susceptible to out of plane mechanism formation that is this wall in the structure with these two in plane return walls rigorously using discrete interface modeling approach. This is a model of the wall which was modeled using discrete interface model approach using combined sharing cracking crushing model. So this was the deformed profile that was obtained for the structure and pushover analysis was also carried out for the structure further. So the maximum shear capacity of the structure was coming close to 98 kilonewton and the displacement as shown. So for this macro block, some we can also see some kind of cracks forming at this level. So the conclusions of the analysis that have been carried out till now as a comparison between nonlinear finite element modeling in Diana and equivalent frame approach in Tremuri is that the pushover analysis in stronger direction was giving a peak load of 5800 kilonewton in Diana and it was giving close to 8000 or 8100 kilonewton in Tremuri that is equivalent frame approach. In the weaker direction it was giving it as 4100 kilonewton and 6000 kilonewton and ultimate displacement was 38 mm and in equivalent frame approach and in nonlinear finite element modeling it was 28 mm for in the weaker direction ultimate displacement was 21 mm in Diana and 24 mm in Trimuri. So these are the summary that is the key points that are observed after the analysis of the structure that is the damage propagation and progressive behavior of the structure was captured well using nonlinear finite element modeling in Diana. Also for structures with less number of redundants, it is always not safe to neglect the contribution of out of plane walls from the analysis that was shown in the initial phase of the analysis that is section 2. Also once failure initiates and to check the possibility of formation of any isolated mechanisms. The behavior of the structure 
can be captured properly using discrete interface finite element modeling in approach in Diana and can be used for the formation of any isolated mechanism formation. So this is a summary of the research work that has been carried out. So thank you.